What if you could talk to your dead family members? Ask them questions, share with them your stories, etc. I know it might sound eerily crazy, but technologically it's possible. With the progress made in AI technology in recent years, it's possible to create an exact copy of someone and interact with them. For instance, Carrie Fisher, after her death, was digitally rendered in order to portray her role as Princess Leila in the latest Star Wars film. Two years ago, the internet was shocked by Morgan Freeman's spooky deepfake video, portrayed by Dutch filmmaker Bob de Jong. And, uh, and probably the most controversial example of it is Anthony Bourdain's voice that's been recreated to talk in a documentary dedicated to him where he said the words he had never said but written. There's no happy ending. But what are the ethical red lines and possible dangers of recreating dead people might cause? And how is even is that? Can you even create a digital copy of yourself or your deceased loved ones and talk to them, ask them questions, talk about your past memories? Yes, it's possible. Keep watching to find out how. A new debate is raging over the use of artificial intelligence in a resurrection of an actor who's been dead for more than 20 years. Losing a loved one can be devastating. In the movie P.S. I Love You, Holly has a hard time letting go of her deceased husband Gary, who died of a brain tumor. And suddenly, on her 30th birthday, she starts receiving letters from Gary. The letters keep coming in from time to time. Gary, knowing how hard it was going to be after his death, had arranged the letters and even a vacation trip to help his wife get over his death. It's a 2007 movie when AI was much different than it's now. But the concept is very similar to what some of the major tech companies are trying to achieve. Some have already achieved it to a certain extent. For example, last year, Microsoft announced that it had secured a patent for software that could reincarnate people as a chatbot. Amazon has also announced the development of a feature for its virtual assistant Alexa, which allows the assistant to read stories in a deceased person's voice after just hearing a minute of their speech. To teach an AI model to talk like someone you know, you need a dataset of texts written or spoken by that person, which can be used to train the chatbot. Additionally, you will need to use a specific type of algorithm, such as neural network, that is capable of learning to mimic the language patterns and the style of the person in question. The more data and the better quality is the data, the better the model will be able to imitate the person's speech patterns. It works well for millennials who post everything they do on the internet, but less well for older people who aren't as online Foxed or savvy. Nevertheless, James Vlahos, CEO and co-founder of the company Here After AI, built a chatbox version of his late father and called it Deadbot. His dad was terminally ill and Vlahos decided to collect his dad's data through an interview process before he died. His dad shared lots of stories and memories. Vlahos then transcribed those conversations and gathered his own memories of his dad. He then used a software platform called PullString to program the Deadbot. Vlaus spent a year inputting strings of conversation and teaching the bot to interpret what people said to it. When sent a message or asked a question, the dad bot responded similarly to how his father would respond, either with a text or audio message, or even with a photo. Now his dad is not only in heaven, but ironically in Vlaus' pocket too. He chats with the dad bot whenever he wants to hear his voice. He even asks him to sing their favorite songs. How about you sing me a cow song? The card me down, boys, the card me down, the card me down, boys, the card But the one that blew my mind away is this guy, Stefan Smith, who is the CEO of an AI company called Starfile. Last year, Mr. Smith made his mother, Marina Smith, talk to the guests at her own funeral. What would you say at your funeral? I would say at my funeral. I'm so pleased that... The guest is sat at her funeral and asked questions to the late Marina Smith's avatar on a screen right next to her coffin. But their AI model doesn't generate answers by itself. Storyfile makes clients go through a process of answering hundreds of questions while they're alive, just like Vlahos made his father. When asked a question, a digital replica of a person answers the question. AI's role here is to find the most relevant answers to the questions from the dataset. The South Koreans have taken it to Android level. What they have done is mind blowing.
There was a nationwide famous singer in South Korea, Kim Kwan Sok. Unfortunately, he died in 1996 when he was only 32 years old. A South Korean AI company, Supertone, developed an AI model to resurrect the deceased singer's voice to sing songs he had never sung. The model mimicked the range of Kim's vocal cords after learning 20 of his songs. The result left the viewers amazed. It was so great that even the developers themselves were surprised by the outcome. So they kept him singing, and the singer sang more than 700 songs 25 years after his death. Kim Kwan Sok still has a very huge fan base in South Korea, and people are very excited to hear him singing again. This is a milestone, this is a very important breakthrough in technology and in the entertainment industry as well. Because most of us have favorite singers that have passed away and left us longing to hear them sing new songs, release new albums and so on. For example, Keith Flint, one of the vocalists of my favorite band, The Prodigy, took his life 4 years ago. The band itself is still active and for me it will be extremely exciting to hear his voice in The Prodigy's new songs or possibly at their concerts. Now now take all of the examples I gave you previously and combine them with the last year's most significant development in AI technology. ChatGPT. ChatGPT, it's extremely good. ChatGPT, it's now taking the internet by storm. ChatGPT. 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 On November 30, 2020, OpenAI launched ChatGPT as a prototype. Due to its detailed human-like responses and articulate answers on almost every subject, it quickly drew attention to itself. One of the main things that distinguish ChatGPT from other chatbots is its ability to imitate the writing styles of others. Well, currently only famous people's writing styles whose data it has access to. For instance, I asked ChatGPT to write me a short story by itself in Mark Twain style. The response was amazing. I will read the middle part of that short story to let you know how good ChatGPT is at copying other people's styles. Old man Jenkins was sitting on his front porch, sipping on a glass of iced tea and fanning himself with a newspaper. Suddenly, a young boy came running down the street, hollering at the top of his lungs. Mr. Jenkins, Mr. Jenkins, the river is rising fast and headed straight for town. Old man Jenkins took a sip of his tea and replied, Well, I reckon it will just have to get in line behind all my other problems. You see, those who are familiar with Mark Twain's writing style could easily believe that these sentences are from one of his books. But they aren't. In fact, ChatGPT made this story up by itself in, I don't know, 30 or 40 seconds. It means if OpenAI provides any service for their chatbots to be trained by ordinary individuals, people might easily train them with the personal data of the person they want to resurrect or make immortal. Now think about it. Considering all these milestones in AI technology, it will be possible to bring the dead people back to life. Not exactly in the same physical body, but in a machine, in your computer, cell phone, and so on. You might even hardly notice somebody's death if you talk to them mainly on Online via video call. Every year, especially after the pandemic, the tendency of meeting people in person is on decline. Many meetings and conversations are online these days. For example, if you talk to your grandfather living hundreds of miles away from you once a month on Zoom or Skype, you wouldn't even notice if one day an AI replica of your grandfather with the elements of his personality, with the same sense of humor, with the same exact voice takes over your Zoom meetings with your grandfather. And plus, the more you talk to him, the better and more natural he will get over time by improving himself and correcting his own mistakes. But we have only talked about the positive aspects of it. Creating digital replicas of deceased individuals using AI technology raises complex ethical issues. First, grief and mourning. Although it's believed that digital replicas might ease the pain of losing someone close and help relatives cope with death, many psychologists also support the idea that creating digital replicas of deceased individuals could potentially prolong the grieving process for those who have lost a loved one. It can also change the way people remember and perceive the person who passed away and may cause confusion or disturbance of memories. By the way, there is a Black Mirror episode fully dedicated to this issue. The episode is Be Right Back, I think you should watch it. Anyway, second, misuse and abuse, three words. There is a potential that these digital replicas could be used for malicious purposes. 
such as impersonation, harassment, or other nefarious activities. That's exactly why Gabon was on the brink of a civil war in 2019. Gabon's president, Ali Bongo, suffered a stroke and had been receiving medical treatment abroad. But his prolonged absence had caused growing suspicion among the people of Gabon. Civil society groups and people questioned if he was well, then why the president hadn't made any public appearances or statements. In an attempt to ease tensions, the president's advisors promised that they would share a new video of the president addressing the people. But when the government released the video, it only raised more questions and skepticism. As the president had suffered a stroke recently, he looked oddly different in the video. Many believed that the president was no longer alive and the video itself was a deepfake video. And the one in the video was the president's digital replica. One week after the video's release, Gabon's military attempted an unsuccessful coup, citing the video's oddness as proof that it was deepfaked and the president itself was actually dead. It. Thankfully, it failed and the president started appearing in the public again. But the skepticism surrounding the video was not completely baseless. Technically, it's possible to create a replica of a leader and create chaos in a country by making the replica say dangerous things. I don't know, declaring curfew or declaring a war on another country or announcing a substantial increase in the national minimum wage and so on. You can also do some minor wrongdoings such as creating a digital replica of your boss and calling your co-workers with this replica to give them a day off. You can do whatever crazy thing comes to your mind. For me personally, the ethical part of recreating a dead person is not less concerning than the misuse part. I lost my father in 2020 due to COVID complications. He was very healthy for his age and did not suffer from any chronic disease or anything. Losing him all of a sudden because of COVID had a devastating effect on me and my family. And roughly four days after he passed away, my sister sent me a video. When I opened the video, I saw my father there, playing, talking, having fun with his grandchildren. His smile, his voice, it was, it was so real that I found myself in an agony of mental pain watching that video because my brain had a real hard time trying to process what I had just seen. For my brain, he was no longer in life, but for my eyes, he was right there, right in front of my eyes, moving, talking, laughing. It was the first and the last time I watched any video of my father after he passed away. And I think the reason my brain struggled a lot watching that video is that we are not used to it. It's not in our genetics. Not yet. We modern humans have a history of 300,000 years. And for almost all of our history, we did not have a chance to see our deceased loved ones after their deaths. They died, they were gone forever. You wouldn't see them again, only in your memories and perhaps in your dreams if you were lucky enough. It was only the last century when video was largely introduced to people. Compared to our 300,000 years of history, it's nothing, just a tiny particle. Therefore, I believe we are not used to seeing our close ones after their death. And yet we want to resurrect them to interact with them. I don't know, man, it's, it's awfully confusing. What do you think? Tell me your own opinion. Should AI bring the dead back to life? What would the negative and positive outcomes be? You can write your own opinion below. Your subscription also matters. Subscribe to the channel to help me create more content like this. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Peace.